Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this composition here. This is like a dripping makeup effect inspired by James Charles. He's a famous makeup YouTuber. He calls it a blank canvas. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a photo manipulation that emulates that blank canvas look here in GIMP 2.10.6. But of course, before we get into that, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, as well as Project Translate. You can watch one of our GIMP playlists and support us on Patreon or view one of our Poll of the Week results, so definitely check those items out. You can also enroll in one of our live online presentations via our new Endeavor GIMP School. And as always, I'll include a discount link in the description of this video. You can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher, which is a bestseller on Udemy and also ranked one of the highest GIMP courses on Udemy by beginners. And you can support us on Patreon and help our channel grow. And in addition to that, you'll get access to bonus and exclusive GIMP material. All right, so the photo we'll be using for today's tutorial is found on Pixabay for free. And you could download it here, you'll click free download. I went with the larger image right here, so uh, choose that image, then click download. And so again, here is the final result. So I'll be using a combination of layer masks, layer modes, some image adjustments, and the dodge and burn tools to create this final effect here. All right, so here is our original image that we're gonna start with. You can open this by going to File Open and finding the file that you downloaded on your computer. I scaled this down to 3000 by 2000 to start just to make it a bit more manageable. You can go to image, scale image if you wanna scale it down as well. And I just typed in 2000 by 3000 and then hit scale. The first thing I wanna do is copy this original layer. So I'm gonna hit this duplicate icon here in my layers panel. And that'll give us two versions of this original layer. And I'll just name this woman and then woman copy. Once I've done that, I'm going to create a new layer and you'll see here I've just named this white. I'm gonna choose fill with and choose white and click okay. And I'm gonna move this between the woman copy layer and the woman layer. And I'm just gonna hide this top layer. So the reason we have the top layer here is this is the layer that's going to provide the color in the top half here where it sort of looks like dripping makeup. And then the bottom here is going to provide the part that looks like it's white. So it looks like she's wearing white makeup and then the background has also been sort of uh, turned into a desaturated look. And the reason I did that was it just sort of enhances the look of the color here. It really brings that out. So in order to achieve that effect, we've got this white layer here. And what I need to do is change the layer mode of this. So I'll go to mode and I'll change this to HSV saturation. So you can see that already gives us that white look here. So that was pretty simple. We do want to tone it down a bit and be able to show a little bit of the colors coming through. That's what's going to help make it look like she's almost got like white makeup on or something because you could see a little bit of the original colors from the image uh, coming through. So I set this to around 80% right here for the opacity of our white layer. So next I'm going to add contrast to the image below. So I'll do that by going to colors, curves to start. And I'm just going to click in the middle of this curve and that's going to create a point. And then I'm going to drag the lower part of this curve down a little bit. And then the upper part of the curve, I'm going to grab and drag it up. So that's going to create an S curve. And you guys know from watching my tutorials that that will create contrast in your image. I don't want to uh, overdo any of these, the top or the bottom. If I overdo the top, it'll make it too bright. If I overdo the bottom, it'll make it look too dark. So there we've got some contrast there. And again, I'm gonna tone it down just a tiny bit and I'll click okay. We can also add contrast via the brightness contrast tool. So I'll go ahead and click on that. I went to colors, brightness contrast. And I'm just going to increase the contrast a tiny bit. I'm gonna leave the brightness where it's at because I don't think that we really need to add any more brightness to this. And I'll click okay. So that's a very subtle effect. And the last image adjustment I'm gonna make is I'm gonna to go to colors hue saturation and now I'm going to adjust the saturation by turning it up a bit again not too much and then I'll also turn up the lightness a little bit so that's helping to bring out those whites without making it look overexposed or anything like that so there's a before there's an after so that looks all right to me I'll click OK all right, so next thing we need to do is we need to isolate her face using the paths tool. So I'm gonna come over here and grab the Ken Brewer paths tool, which is named after one of our diamond member Patreon supporters, Ken Brewer. 
And by the way, I just put out a tutorial on how to master the paths tool in GIMP 2.10, so check that tutorial out. But once I have the paths tool, I'll hold control and I'll zoom in with my mouse wheel. And what we need to do is trace the outline of our subject's face here. And you can click and drag this tool, and that is going to allow you to create curves with the paths tool. And you're just going to do this all the way around the image. And you'll have parts like this where you need to make adjustments to the curves to uh, make it fit right. And I'm holding the space bar and moving with my mouse to move along the image here. And then I can just move this. This is called an anchor point. And then in between these anchor points are segments. And so the segments are where your curves are. So I'll create a segment there. And then do one around the ear here. Again, the curves are a little messed up here, but you can go back later and uh, make sure that you correct that curve. And I'm going to do a really rough outline here uh, just to demonstrate because I did already do this part. So right here when you've got your two anchor points, you've got your first anchor point and actually let me add one more anchor point here. So you've got your first and your last anchor point. Hold control and that will create a union and click and now you have a closed loop. So once you've finished off uh, closing that loop, what you need to do now is go around your image and you can grab your uh, various anchor points and these are called handles here and you can adjust your handles so that the curves fit properly on the image. And uh, so here we've got some handles we can adjust. Same right here. Just go ahead and adjust these handles. And I left the earring out just because it's already sort of a black and white color and it's uh, going to be underneath where the makeup effect is going to be dripping in. So we don't really need that to uh, be selected there. And then if you have an anchor point that doesn't have a curve, just hold control and then click and drag and that'll create handles and you can do it in either direction and then that will add curve to any anchor points that don't already have curves. All right, so once you're done creating this path, and obviously I haven't finished uh, fixing some parts of the details here, but again, I've already done this, so I'm not going to go through it too much right now. But uh, zoom in here on these anchor points that go around the chin, and just click on each one and hit your backspace key, and that's going to delete those anchor points. And the reason I'm doing this is because with our makeup drip effect, it's only going to occur uh, around the nose and basically in the areas above the nose. And so now what I can do is I can click on this line segment and just drag it up like so, so that it just sort of loops around the nose. And then I can drag my handles here and this is going to allow this to go above the nose here and uh, you'll see how this plays into our final image. And you'll see that I'm making the curve right here follow the curve of her face so it's a little shorter, a little more steep right here. And then here the curve is longer and it's following her cheek. So if I were to do this incorrectly, it would be something like this where it was even on both sides. That doesn't really make sense from a perspective standpoint. So we sort of cheated over this way to the left and that way it looks like it's curving along with her face. So what I'm going to do is come over to my original composition. Uh, you guys are going to skip this part, but I've already created this path right here and it's a little bit more precise. So I'm going to right click and copy path and then come over here, right click, paste path, and now I have that path that I drew in my original composition which has a little bit more detail to it. You can see I've got more anchor points here so it's a little bit more precise. And you can always add anchor points by the way by holding control and then clicking on the path and we're going to get into some of that as we go through this tutorial. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to delete that path. So that was the path that I just drew as an example. And this is what your guys' final path should look like, something similar to this. And by the way, if you don't see your paths dialog here, just go to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and then choose Paths right here. And that should cause this to open up over here. So making sure I'm still in my paths tool, I'm going to click on this path and that is going to activate the path. And by the way, you can always show or hide your path over here. When it's shown, it'll be in red, as you see here. And it doesn't necessarily have to be shown in order to work on it. That's just a way to easily be able to find where your path is and what the shape of it is. And I'm going to come back over here to my layers panel. What I want to do now is I want to create drips from this path so that it looks like the makeup is going to be dripping because the makeup is going to follow this path that we've drawn. So I'm going to zoom in using control and my mouse wheel. And what I recommend doing 
is for starters, you see her chin is ending right about here. And so we want the drip starting on her actual face. We don't want them starting over here by her ear. So I'm gonna draw my first anchor point and you'll see there's a plus sign there. I'm holding the control key and I'm gonna draw my first anchor point right there. The handle is way off to the left on this because uh, there's such a large curve to this and this anchor point is starting uh, from where we started this curve. Uh, so now I'm going to just hold control and draw several anchor points just along the right side of her face. And we're gonna go back and make adjustments to these, but I'm just randomly adding anchor points and I'm adding uh, a numerous amount of anchor points as you could tell. So now what I wanna do is just click on some of these anchor points, I'm gonna drag them way out. And then some of the anchor points I'm only gonna drag out partially. So I wanna create a varied look here. And this one I'll drag way out. And we're gonna go back and uh, make this a bit more dynamic. So this is just uh, sort of a starter. And I'll drag this one way out. All right, so now we've got a bunch of random uh, curves happening here and uh, some pretty primitive looking drips. So I'm gonna just zoom in here a little bit and I do want to make this one go down a little bit more. So now what I'm gonna do is use the handles and I'm going to just enhance the curves there. And then for these larger drips, what's going to happen is I'm gonna hold control and I'm just going to add a bunch of new anchor points all along this curve here. And this is going to allow us to just make it appear as if you know it's a drop that's traveling down her face. And so if I come down here to this first one, you'll see we've got some handles down here and I'm just going to drag these out a little bit so they look like some sort of drop. And then I'm going to click on these anchor points here and just randomly put them in a new location. And this part is up to your discretion. There's no formula for this. It's just however you want it to look. So we'll leave that like that for now. And we'll come over here and Again, I'm just randomly adding anchor points and I'm dragging the handles around. And the reason we do this is just that when, if you see the James Charles picture from his tutorial, the makeup is just randomly dripping along his face. So there's not really any uniform look to it. And you can always zoom out. And if you unclick the paths tool, you can see what that path looks like so far. So we've got some work to do here uh, to make this look right especially like right here. You don't want any sharp turns or edges like that that just looks fake. So uh, we're gonna grab our pass tool and we're gonna fix that. So we'll just sort of work on this curve here. So again, right here, we are adding a bunch of random anchor points. And usually the longer the drip is, the more anchor points you're gonna have. So if you want it to look a little bit more realistic, you can, to a degree, make it follow the curvature of her face. So in this case, her cheek is right here. So we can sort of make this appear as if it's rolling off to the left a little bit you know, following the contour of her cheek. You don't want to overdo it though, because it might look a little bit ridiculous. So we can go with something like that. And then here we've got too many straight lines, so we're just going to make these curves. And then we'll add anchor points here as well. So here we've got the contour of her cheek kind of coming out like this. So we wanna sort of uh, loosely follow that. Again, we don't have to really tightly follow the physics of her face and the droplet, but uh, just make some effort here to have this stream sort of following the contour. And I'll hit Control Z of her cheek. So I'll zoom out here and grab another tool just so I can kind of see how this is coming along right now. So in my opinion, I think this looks kind of silly. Both of these, they're sort of the same length. And so it's not varied enough. So what I'm gonna do is just zoom in and I'm gonna shorten this one up a little bit 
So I'll grab my paths tool, click on my path again, and I'll start by deleting some of these handles because if we shorten this up, we won't need as many handles. And then if I click, and by handles I mean anchor points, and I'll hit Control Z. If I click on these and hold Shift, I can select multiple anchor points, and then I can drag all of these at once, and that just makes it easier for me to relocate that. So now I'm going to click off and hit Control Z to delete that anchor point. Uh, let me actually click on an existing anchor point here. That'll deselect all of our other anchor points, and then I can get back to work on uh, creating the form for this strip here. And then I'll hold Control. I'm going to create an anchor point right here. So now we're going to move along to the nose. And what I did here, same thing, just created uh, anchor points along the nose and then uh, drooped some of them, you know, large drips there. And then for some of them, I just did uh, small ones like that. And you can move some of these up on the face a little bit. So I'll zoom out here, grab a different tool, see what this looks like. And this will come together a little bit better as we add shading to this. And if we don't like the shape, uh, we can always go back and make adjustments to the Paths tool. That's kind of one of the main benefits of the Paths tool is it's always there, so it can always be uh, adjusted. So I'm going to come back here and just make this look a little bit less square. All right, so I'm going to move down to the last portion here. And same thing, just add a bunch of random anchor points. All right, so I'm going to zoom out and center this up and grab another tool. And I'm going to just test what this looks like right now by coming over here to my path tool and make sure I'm clicked on this path here. And if I hover over this icon here, you'll see it's called path to selection. So I'll click that and that'll turn my path into a selection area. And I'll come back over here to my layers panel. And here we have our woman copy layer we were working on. So I'll unhide that. And now what I'm going to do is mask out everything that's outside the selection area. So I'll right click and go to add layer mask. And under initialize layer mask 2, I'm going to choose selection and click add. And that will mask out everything that's outside the selection. And I'll hit control shift A. And let me also hide this path. And this gives you an idea, uh, a rough idea of what this looks like so far. So I'll just zoom in here and just sort of check out the path here and make sure that I like the way that it looks. And I think that looks fine, so I'm just going to leave that as is. It's going to look a little bit better as we shade it in. And so that is actually the next portion of this tutorial, which is the shading part. And you want to make sure you don't do the shading until you're sure that this is the shape you want for the drips happening, uh, just because it'll be hard to go back and recreate the shading. If you want, you can duplicate this woman copy layer, and you could just name this shading, and then name this shading copy and just hide the shading copy layer and that way if you do end up messing up the shading on here or if you decide you don't like the shape of the drips that you made you can go back and start over on the shading copy layer but i'm going to click on my shading layer and for this portion i actually use my wacom tablet so i'm going to switch over to my wacom tablet right now and the first thing i did was i grabbed my dodge and burn tool so this is the dodge and burn tool right here what this is essentially going to do is it's going to darken or lighten parts of your image. And that's going to allow us to create some easy shading. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use my Wacom tablet. And by the way, if you have a Wacom tablet and you want to follow along with that, you can watch my tutorial on how to install a Wacom tablet in GIMP. Otherwise, you can use your mouse. If you don't have a Wacom tablet, you can accomplish the same things I'll be doing here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the size of my brush. And you can use the left or right brackets on your keyboard. I'm using the uh, little circle on my Wacom tablet here. And we'll want to zoom in on our composition, so I'm going to hold Control and zoom in. 
And I'm just gonna decrease my brush size a little bit more. I want it to be pretty small here. And I'm gonna come over here and make sure that my type is set to burn. And I'm gonna set the range right now to highlights. And here you can control your exposure, which is basically how dark this is gonna show up. And we're gonna make adjustments to this as we go. It's gonna be hard to tell at first uh, what exposure and everything we want this at, but for now I'm just gonna keep it here around 30. And what I need to do is I'm on my shading layer and because there's a layer mask, anything I paint outside the layer mask is not gonna show up. So what that allows me to do is paint with this tool and you'll see that I can paint right here on the edges and that's causing this to look uh, a little bit darker. So I'm gonna hold Control Z and undo that because I think that's actually too dark. So what I'm gonna do is crank my exposure down a little bit. So we'll try 20. You can also uh, come up here to the top and decrease the opacity. And uh, so that is similar to exposure in that it's going to reduce how dark this shows up. So I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna decrease the opacity a tiny bit more. We're pretty much almost there. So we'll go with that. And so I'm just gonna go around uh, the edges really of the drips here and color them in dark. And that's just creating the appearance that uh, this is sort of raised up a little bit because the light's hitting uh, this part right here a little bit more than the dark part. So we're basically creating shading where we want uh, this to appear as if it's recessed a little bit. And I'm holding the space bar to move around my image. And you don't have to outline every single part of the drips just parts that you want to look as if they are recessed a little bit. But I do recommend doing this on the parts where there's like a turn right there. So you can see this is already giving our drips right here a bit of dimension. So as we start to get into the darker parts of our image, you'll notice that this doesn't seem to have quite as much of an effect. We're gonna switch the range down here to shadows uh, a little bit later in a second here, uh, just because the there's more shadows right here and more midtones than highlights. So uh, right now, remember, we're only working on the highlights with this burn tool. And I'm gonna stop right there just because, again, these are all darker parts of our image, so using the highlights uh, part of this tool, the highlights range is not really gonna have much of an effect over here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over and switch the range to shadows, and now you'll see that this works a little bit better. So this is working on the darker parts of our image. And let's just turn the opacity up a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. Maybe turn the exposure up a little bit as well. And you'll see over here, it's really having an effect because these are the shadows of our image, whereas these are probably more of the midtones. So let me undo this and turn the opacity back down a little bit, turn the exposure back down a little bit. We don't wanna overdo it. And with these being in the shadows, it's not going to have as much effect, uh, you know, in a natural setting, in a real setting. The lighting isn't going to be as noticeable over here. All right, so I'm going to hold control and zoom out a little bit. So you guys can see now we've got some shading going on, some dark shading. And now what we need to do is we need to balance that out with some light shading. So I'm going to zoom back here on the start and I'm going to switch my type over here to dodge, and that's going to allow me to brighten the image instead of darkening it. And I'm just gonna test this out. Actually, let me switch the highlights first, and I'll just test this out. So I hit Control Z. I can probably decrease my brush size a tiny bit. So this is sort of the tricky part because basically what you're doing is you are adding a highlight above the shadows that you created, and that is creating the illusion that basically this is the crest or the sort of peak of the makeup and uh, after that point is where it sort of falls off a little bit and loses some of its depth and that's why it becomes darker. 
So I'm going to undo that a little bit. I'm going to turn my opacity down just so this effect isn't as strong. And you want to try to match the contour of the shape that you're painting on. So right here, because this is curved a little bit, I drew this as a bit of a curve. So again, I'm going to turn the opacity down a tiny bit, maybe turn the exposure down a tiny bit. And here we could switch the range over to mid-tones and that'll allow this to show up a little bit better right here since these parts are a little bit darker. And then actually for this part we could switch over to shadows. And I don't think I ever actually got this with the burn tool uh, set on shadow, so let me just get that real quick. Turn the opacity up a little bit. And now I'll switch the type back over to dodge and continue working uh, highlighting this. And I'm going to hold control and zoom out a little bit just to see what this looks like so far. So as you can see, it's starting to look pretty 3D. The shading is coming together. So we're just going to continue going through the image, going around the image. And let me switch this back over to highlights. And we're just going to continue adding these highlights here. You can increase the brush if the highlights aren't large enough. And by the way, I also have this set to a pretty soft brush here. So this is just the first option. And you can also choose one of these soft brushes over here. But you'll see I have my hardness set to 25. You can also copy my other settings right here. So as we get into these darker areas, again, you can switch over to either the midtones or the shadows, depending on how dark it is, and continue working. So now I'll switch over to my shadows. And again, for this part, you don't want it to be too bright because in reality, there isn't going to be as much light on this side of the face. This is in the shadows. But we do want a little bit of light. So hold control and zoom out to see how this looks right now. So you can see there's a lot more dimension now and it's looking like this is dripping right here and uh, it's sort of dripping in a rolling fashion and it just sort of adds thickness to the imaginary makeup that we created here. The last thing I'm going to do in the way of shading is I'm going to add a little bit more bright shading to the tips of the dripping here and that's just going to give the effect that it's sort of rounded at those portions and uh, the reason we do that is because a droplet as you guys know is rounded and uh, so it just gives the appearance that there's a thick droplet at the bottom of these drips. So I'm going to zoom in and for this I'm going to increase the opacity a little bit so it's a little bit more opaque than it was before and I'm just going to test this out. Let me increase the exposure as well and actually make sure I have this set to highlights. So you'll see here, this is a much brighter spot. That might be a little too bright actually. So let me turn the opacity down a bit. But you can see it's creating this sort of droplet look at the uh, tip of these parts that are dripping right here. And then here we're gonna switch over to shadows and do the same thing. And for this last one here, since it's the darkest part of our image, we can probably turn the opacity down a little bit there. All right, so hold control and zoom out. All right, so now you can see we've created the appearance of uh, these having droplets at the end of the drips here. And then it looks like the makeup is a little bit raised right here. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the color of the top part here. And so what I'm going to do is make sure I'm clicked on the shading layer, make sure I'm not clicked on the layer mask, but clicked on the image itself. And then I'm going to add an image adjustment to this by going to Colors, Saturation. And I'm just going to drag the saturation slider up a bit until I get the amount of color I want on here. And the reason I'm turning the saturation up is it's just going to allow the colors to stand out even more than they already are. So we'll go with about right there and click OK. 
Something you'll notice with the saturation turned up is that the edges right here of our layer mask are not perfect. So you could see that we kind of uh, created a layer mask here. You could see the edge between the color and the black and white. So what we wanna do is click on our layer mask and make sure that our color is set to white and we're gonna grab our paintbrush. And I'm just gonna increase the size of this a little bit and make sure again our hardness is pretty low on this brush. And actually let me switch the color to black. So what I'm gonna do is just, and again, I'm using my Wacom tablet. You can use the mouse to do this. And I accidentally grabbed a couple guides there. So let me undo that. I'm just going to lightly paint around the edge here with this pretty soft brush. And then I'll hit X on my keyboard. That'll switch me over to white. And I'm going to try to paint some of this edge back in. And this is just allowing us to blend the edge a little bit better between the color and the black and white. So I'm just alternating between black and white and alternating between getting rid of the edge and bringing some of the edge back in. But as you can see, the edge isn't quite as hard anymore. It's a little bit softer and that's allowing the color to fade a little bit better into the black and white. So I'll switch to black and do the same thing here. Because the hair is a fairly dark color right here, we don't have to do uh, as much or be as precise with bringing the edge back in. So I would say that looks pretty decent right there. So now I'm gonna come back onto our actual layer, not the layer mask, and I'm gonna grab our dodge and burn tool again, and I'm just gonna increase the size of my brush a little bit more. And I'm gonna make sure this is set to highlights. What I'm doing is I'm just sort of enhancing the makeup that's already on our model a little bit by uh, making it either a little bit lighter or a little bit darker using this dodge or burn tool. And I'm going to decrease the exposure a little bit because I don't want it to be too pronounced. And so this is sort of like the contouring portion. So we'll just do the middle of her nose. And now what I'm gonna do is switch over to burn. So I'm gonna do sort of the same thing, but I'm gonna do the darker parts and just sort of contour them a little bit. And again, remember we have a layer mask here, so if we come outside the layer mask, it's uh, not going to show up. And I'll hit Control Z, I'm going to decrease the exposure of this a tiny bit, and maybe the opacity as well. And so we're just enhancing the parts that are already dark, and then I'm also just going to darken some of the outline right here and I'll decrease my brush size. I also darken the eyebrows a little bit. And then I darken around the actual eyes themselves, especially the parts that were already dark. This just kind of gives her more of a smoky eye look, I suppose. And I'll hold control and zoom out. And one last thing we can do is we can uh, zoom in and we can enhance the eyes. And we can do that by switching back over to Dodge and decreasing the size of our brush here just to about the size of the iris. And then we can just paint the color part of her iris. And that should brighten that up a little bit. We can increase the opacity. And then move over a little bit and do the same here. All right, the last thing I'll do is I'll just add a little bit of curves to this. So I'll go to Colors, Curves, and this is going to add a bit of contrast again because we're going to create an S-curve, like so. And I'll click OK, and there we go. So that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also check out our latest live presentations at gimpschool.com. You can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support us on Patreon and help our channel grow. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.